Be your mark. Right. It was a great shoot this morning. Please Bye. enjoy reassembling uh, assembling the gallery. See ya. Alrighty, so now it's time to head to the warehouse. That's where we're going. of the DSLR is I'm using uh, the Z7 more and more and uh, I'd probably use mostly just Z's if I, if I had to not if I had to if I had to this is still an outstanding camera but the Z is actually easier to use in 95% of situations. And I find myself in 95% of situations, strangely 95% of the time. So, uh, yeah, I do wonder what's gonna happen with these guys. Outstanding, Nikon's best lens ever. But we are well on the road to mirrorless taking over. So have a think about that with your next purchase. Should I ever buy another DSLR? Sony E-mount users, this is not for you the full frame cats out there but to Canon and Nikon users yes this is for you should I ever buy another DSLR or not what do you think what are the reasons that you would own a digital single lens reflex that's what it stands for I think the most compelling reason today is for the optical viewfinder. Absolutely. You still can't beat looking at the real world, looking at real photons. You can't beat that. No two ways about it. So that would be my number one reason. Number two, depending on which level you're getting into and what you're trying to achieve, I would say focusing especially if you're a Canon or a Nikon owner, mostly if you're a Nikon owner, focusing is still better on the top of the line Nikons than it is on their mirrorlesses. But that gap is closing. And to me, that's only really relevant when you're in low light. When you're in uh, normal light, like we are right now outside, nice and bright, plenty of sun, no real issue. So focusing is almost becoming a non-issue. We, of course, know the Sonys are very good at focusing and Canon also are very good at focusing. So here in this 35 mil space, let's talk about it. We've got optical viewfinder, we've got focus, and then the other thing might be the speed of the camera. With stills, how fast does it focus? With stills, how many frames can you punch out a second? Well, Sony's already got the A9 and I think that's something like 20 frames per second. So they've proved it's possible in their system. Canon and Nikon are a little farther behind, but they haven't released their pro cameras yet in the mirrorless space. So I would say as soon as they come out, and I'm guessing it's gonna be next year, faster shooting stills is going to be irrelevant. Irrelevant. Now, are there any other reasons that you might want to continue to use your DSLR? Let's have a think. Look, the only one, any other reason that really comes straight to mind to me is lenses. Oh, I want to use all my old lenses, but again, that's been addressed. It's been addressed with 
for example, the Nikon, the F to Z adapter, and Canon has exactly the same thing. And I've been using that adapter now for uh, over six months. I've used it not with all my lenses, because I don't use all my lenses all the time, but I've used it with about half of them, and it works like a charm. It works like a dream. I cannot see any perceivable difference. And the only time that I think it might be a problem is if you, and I haven't tried this because I don't have them, but if you wanted to use teleconverters. So imagine the F to Z, a teleconverter, and then something like a, I don't know, I've got the 200 to 400 F4 lens. That might be asking a bit too much, but it still might work. I'm not sure. I can't think of any other reasons. Is there any other reasons? Is there any other reasons why a DSLR is better? I don't think so. Otherwise, the sensors are much the same in the two machines, and you're going to get very similar results. So there really isn't a lot of strong, compelling reasons to, t to stay with DSLRs. I think with the next generation of cameras from Sony, Nikon, Canon, I think the Sonys will be sooner. Who knows? I think they're all going to have more mirrorless cameras out next year, for sure. All of these things are going to continue to be addressed. Focus speed, how fast they can shoot, making optical viewfinders better. It's all happening. I mean, it's all happening already. It's all happening already. And uh, that, that 5 or 10% difference right at the top, if you're pushing a your gear to the limit, I reckon that gap is going to be closed down to a 1% difference. Besides the optical viewfinder, I think that's going to have a little further to go. But I have to say, using the Nikon one now, I'm, I'm really happy with it. It's better than the Sony one. I've got the A7R3. Sorry, Sony users, but it is, it is actually a better viewfinder. It gives you a more realistic sense of the world. But these gaps are going to be so small that I have to wonder, if you're in the market, you're thinking about upgrading or buying a new camera, an aging camera, should you go DSLR or not? I kind of feel like there's no real compelling reason to stay anymore. Like in the Z system, the, the best all-rounder, if you want the highest speed focus, the highest ISO, great video capabilities and great stills ca capabilities, the Z6, which is a very affordable camera, is a cracker. You can't go wrong with it. It's a cracker camera. The Z7's a little bit slower on the focus, a little bit lower on the high ISO, but you've got 45.7 or 6 megapixels to pay, play with, which is astonishing. It's a beautiful sensor. Here's some images. So I would strongly think, if you are thinking about buying a new DSLR, is it a good idea? And if you're in the Nikon space, golly gosh, we've just had the announcement of a Sony E-mount to, to Nikon Z adapter, which means you can, I can stick, I've got three Sony E-mount lenses and I can stick them on my, uh, my, my Z. Now this is a big deal. Thank you Nikon for making such a large short mount because this, this is allowing us all those freedoms of lens choices. And I would love to be in that position where I can, I can get any Sony, I mean this, this mount, th what was exciting when the Sonys first came out is you could stick so many different lenses on them because it was a, it was a shorter distance from the, uh, from the mount to the sensor. And now Nikon have gone and done exactly the same thing. They've upped the ante and they've made it even shorter. Even shorter, even larger. So you can stick anything into it. Yes, so. And now, at this mount, you can basically stick anything on it. So do you want to buy the camera where you can stick any lens you've ever seen, almost? You go to an op shop, $5 lens, $2,000 lens, doesn't matter what brand it is. Someone will make an adapter for it in the next couple of years and you can stick it on that camera. So this is the future. So tell me, what are you thinking? Are you thinking, I really would like to know, are you gonna go a DSLR? Or I would either strongly suggest if you want a complete all-rounder that's, uh, that's fast, and I, I think the Z6 is a cracker of a camera. It's, but it's a great camera to start with if you're moving into mirrorless and if you're in the Nikon space and that's what you wanna do. 
I, I don't think the Canon offerings are as, are as strong because they've 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 got this cropped video business going on, which I think is very strange, and they don't have in-body stabilization. Yeah, well, we didn't talk about the advantages of mirrorless. We were just talking about why should you stick with uh, DSLR. But look, that's the other massive thing for Sony and Nikon is you have in-body stabilization, which is super. Canon hasn't done that. So if you're thinking mirrorless, I would go Sony or Nikon at the moment. Uh, Canon will probably get there at some point. I'm so sorry, Canon users, but I just think I just think the 4K crop and the no IBIS, uh, I just can't wrap my head around it. Not sure what they're thinking. I think they're protecting their camera division, their high-end camera division, and their high-end still camera. I think that's what it is. Anyhow, I'd love to know what you're thinking. Canon users, will you still plow on with your R and your RPs, even so? I mean, they're great, but they've got these couple of shortcomings. Or if you're a Nikon user, will you go the Z? Or maybe wait till the next iteration. Um, there's certainly been talk about lower end ones and higher end ones. I don't think you're going to have to wait until past somewhere in 2020 before there's going to be exactly the camera that you want. I'd love to hear what you're thinking. DSLR versus mirrorless, what are you going to do? Please tell me in the comments below. As usual, please like, please share. If this is your first time here, I'd love you to subscribe. These things all help the, uh, the channel grow. And I look forward to seeing you all very soon. Have a great time. Bye for now.